Halo is changing forever. Again. For those of you in the know, you would know that 343 Studios made the announcement the other day that they're changing their name from 343 Studios to Halo Studios and switching to the Unreal Engine. Now, there's a lot of thoughts of this online. There's a lot of emotions going around online. There's a lot of people out there hoping that Halo will return to its former glory that it had during the one, two, and three years, and even during Reach, one of Bungie's last games that they put out. But I'm here to tell you guys, if it doesn't return to its former glory, that's fine. However, in order to talk about this, I think it's important to lay down some certain points that Halo will never be the same. Halo Combat Evolved released back in the early 2000s. I believe it was 2001. Now, I did not have an Xbox at the time. My older brother did in his house, and I played it there with him. I didn't quite understand the hype, and it was definitely not games that I was used to playing. You see, at the time, I had a Sega Dreamcast, and I was very much used to playing. I was used to playing games like Sonic. I was used to playing games like Jet Fighter games and so on and so forth. I really didn't have that. My older brothers were always the ones that had the system. However, one year for Christmas, my dad asked my older brother, hey, what's the best game system we can get for your little brother? And what's the hottest game on the market? And it just so happened to be that the best game system at the time was the Xbox and the hottest game on the market was Halo 2. Now I was disappointed at the time because I didn't understand, but I quickly became enraptured. Before we go on, I want to play this small clip for you from the announcement trailer to moving to Unreal Engine and moving from 343 Studios and renaming themselves to Halo Studios, because I think this is very important for the conversation. What made Halo successful at the beginning? What is the legacy of Halo and what's the soul that we want to bring forward? And what's the craft of making Halo games? And how do we set our studio up best to go deliver on that? Now, as that lady said there, they wanted to get back to what made Halo, Halo. And that's a very deep question, especially if you remember it as well as I do. And I may not remember it. There's been a few beers in between now and then, but hopefully I can encapsulate what made Halo, Halo, and why it's never going to be the same again. You see, after I played Halo 2, I went back and played Halo 1, and I understood it. Very simply, you were dropped off in the middle of a war as a super soldier. You had to be the one to go and fight for humanity. Why? Because you needed to be. A lot of people said that the Master Chief was just a blank slate. That's why he didn't talk a whole lot. He was a blank slate to imprint yourself onto as the player. But I never saw him as that. And everybody that I've talked to has never talked about Master Chief being that character. In fact, all of the Halo players that I've talked about talked about, man, how much of a badass was Master Chief? The guy was augmented. He was heavily armed and he was ready to do business. He was given an order and it was his job to go save humanity because he was the only one that could do it. Yeah, maybe the Marines and all that could have eventually taken care of it, but they wouldn't have fared as well without the Master Chief. This was a critically important role that the Master Chief played in making Halo as popular as it was. You see, he wasn't really a character that young men could imprint themselves on but instead he was a character that young men went, I want to be that guy. That guy is so awesome. The things that he does. And in a quick example here, it wasn't the player character that went and gave the covenant their bomb back. It was Master Chief. That's right. Some of the greatest moments in the Halo franchise were not moments where you controlled Master Chief as the player character, but some of those cutscenes where you actually got to see Master Chief act and you went, man, how awesome is this guy? It was a character that you knew when he showed up in the room, or at least the NPCs in the game, when Master Chief showed up in the room, everything was going to be okay. He was the chief. He was the chief of the tribe. He was the dad of the house. And when things were going wrong, he showed up to set things right. He exuded that masculine energy that oftentimes we've forgotten about in today's world, in today's gaming world, with the exception of a couple of games, one recently, Space Marines 2, which I'm having a blast with. So if you ask the question, how do they get back into the core 
of making Halo what it once was. That's just the first part. You need a strong, stoic character, and it is his job and his job alone to defend humanity. Yes, he might have a supporting cast that's gonna help him out, but overall, at the end of the day, it's on his shoulders because he's the one that can do it. Moving into the gameplay, the gameplay, you were Master Chief. You moved faster than everybody else because you were already augmented. You didn't need a sprint button. You didn't need to go faster. You didn't need to feel like Call of Duty, which is very much what Infinite's multiplayer felt like to me, but that's a story for another time. What you needed is gameplay that made you feel like no matter how many waves of enemies come at you, you can overcome the obstacle. And it's not because you are the Master Chief, it's because that's what the Master Chief does. And you as the player character aren't gonna fail him. With the advent of Halo 2, we saw an immense rise in the gameplay. Why? Because Xbox Live announced that you could play live Halo 2 multiplayer with your friends online. That absolutely changed the landscape. You see, I've had many conversations over the years with my friends about how Xbox completely changed gaming forever. In fact, I would say had the Xbox Live service not been as popular as it was, gaming today would be very different because another service, another service, another Sony or a Sega or a Nintendo would have pioneered a live service play and we would have a very different idea of what live service play is obviously the sony playstation network came out and it wasn't really that good they were trying to compete with xbox on that level and overall many players at the time were like yeah playstation good but xbox live service way better i was there i remember this you're not gonna tell me otherwise it was a phenomenon at the time to be able to talk with your friends over live communication in game. What that was crazy, especially on a console system. We're not talking about a computer that was sitting in your parents' room. We're talking about a console that was in the living room and you were playing it. And not only that, but if your friends didn't have the Xbox and they wanted to play multiplayer with you, you invited them over. You had something that's known as couch co-op that's right ladies and gentlemen the good old-fashioned couch co-op that thing that brought all of us together that thing where we invited our friends over you would plug not one not two but four controllers into your xbox i still have one upstairs and you would have your friends come in as guests in your lobby and you would go and your four friends could play a multiplayer co-op game with you in what was considered one of the most competitive online multiplayer games of the time, Halo 2. This is, I'm very much reliving my childhood at this time. As it grew and grew, obviously the excitement for Halo 3 be as it grew and grew, the excitement for Halo 3 became absolutely massive, and they made the leap from the regular Xbox to the Xbox 360. The graphics were awe-inspiring. That technological jump in graphical fidelity was probably the biggest leap that we have ever done in a console, period. Again, going from the Xbox to the 360 or the PlayStation 2, to the PlayStation 3 was a huge leap in technology and everybody just couldn't believe it. They then went into Halo 3, absolutely mastered the combat, updated things, gave you shield grenades, gave you other grenades to use. You were the master chief, but now you had more tools in the palms of your hands. And you were going to go and do that thing that you did before. You see, Halo became the staple of camaraderie, and not just the camaraderie with your friends over a microphone online, but the camaraderie with your friends in your living room while also hanging out with your friends online. We did that a few times. Oh, hey, he's not able to come up to the house tonight. Why don't you guys come up to the house? Because I have the Xbox. We'll all play, and we'll still get to hang out with our buddy. In addition to that, the game was challenging as well. Halo provided a challenge to so many players. Halo 2 on Legendary, it, it, AI absolutely cheated and it sucked, but damn it if it didn't feel good once you were able to complete that. It was 
so incredible. And then the announcement that Bungie was leaving shortly after they did reach in 2010. Now at that time period, 343 Studios takes over and Halo 4 comes out to middling reviews. In fact, I had friends of mine tell me, hey, Halo 4, eh, it's all right. It's not great. It's all right, but it's not Halo 2 and it's not Halo 3. And then Halo 5 came out and I heard it yet again. And in fact, I heard, dude, it's worse than four. And I went, wait, you just told me not to get four, not to waste my time. And they said, and I'm telling you that five isn't what you need. And then I found out later that a lot of what they did is they got rid of the stoic master chief and kind of replaced him more with the master chief that was more sensitive and becoming in touch with his human side. And then they did some weird things with Cortana and master chief that I was like, um, that's a computer program and he's a dude and the internet is a weird place. In addition to that, you were not the Spartan anymore. You were just one of a few Spartans. You were no longer the one and only man in the game that could go out, decimate the Covenant or the Flood. You were just one of a handful. You see, they took what was special about Master Chief. They took what was special about the games themselves by saying, you as the player, well, you're not playing this special character. And guess what? He's already achieved the highest highs and now he's just another Spartan. There's a few of them. He's not the only one that survived anymore. Probably one of the worst retcons that they had ever done when it comes to Halo. All of that being said, I don't think that they're going to be able to recreate what happened in the original Halo. One, online multiplayer, it's not a new phenomenon anymore. It's, it's a casual thing that everybody has access to nowadays. That was a huge proponent of why Halo was as massive as it was with the Xbox Live service. In addition to that, they've taken the stoicism away and they've taken the one thing away from Master Chief that made him the Master Chief, that he was the only Spartan that survived. In addition to that, now we're going into Unreal Engine 5 and Unreal Engine 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 20, 42, who cares? So now the Master Chief is going to start walking and looking like a lot of other character models in other Unreal games. They're all over the place. You can see an Unreal game. Hell, I know indie developers that are working on the Unreal games. And nothing against those guys because they're working by themselves to create the game that they want for a fun experience and i'm gonna play them day one because i want to but when it comes to halo halo is a unique experience halo was that experience that you couldn't get elsewhere it was only on the xbox and it was with your friends when we would bring three or four xboxes over to one house and network tvs together you see one of the things that I don't think Halo Studios, formerly 343, is going to be able to do is create the Stoic Master Chief yet again. Not only are they not going to be able to create the Stoic Master Chief, they're not going to create the one savior for humanity. Again, storytelling like that seems to be taboo today. We're not allowed to tell stories like that in modern gaming today, which seems odd. In addition to that, there's a camaraderie factor that Halo 2 and Halo 3 and those old systems had when it was playing online with your friends or again, inviting friends over to your house and they could play online with you from couch co-op in the room. No screen watching. If you're screen watching, get out. If you're screen watching, you're getting slugged. And why are you getting slugged? Well, because that's what the boys did. That's how we do. You're not allowed to watch my screen. I'm not allowed to watch your screen. And if I think that you are watching my screen, well, we're just going to unplug your controller. It's really nice. You just grab the cord on the Xbox and rip it and it had that disconnect. Oh, it's great. Oh, your friends got super mad when you did that. The cultural phenomenon that was Halo was absolutely incredible to live through. It was such a fun experience. And to be perfectly honest, it's, a, it's an experience that Halo cannot do again. Not another game, 
Other games may be able to do it. Other games may be able to capitalize on new technology and new ways to bring people together and that camaraderie that we all had when we were younger. They may be able to bring back that power fantasy, strong masculine energy into these games. We're seeing it in Space Marines too. And you and the boys, or you and the boys and the girls, get together my daughter loves playing halo with us when we fire up the old xbox and do it she thinks it's a blast she loves that game but again i don't think that halo studios is going to be able to make halo again and not only that a lot of people online are pointing out the fact that some of the uh, top people in halo studios might be political activists. They have political leanings. They might be trying to lean the game a certain way. I know for me, when I was playing Halo Infinite, the multiplayer, I couldn't believe that they put cat ears on Spartan armor because uwu is what Spartans should be. No. The original people that made Halo found something. It was lightning in a bottle. They did it under the stress of working for Microsoft and trying to get through all of the BS that Microsoft put them through. And those days are gone. Halo, I'm sad to say, ladies and gentlemen, is never going to return to what it was in CE 2 and 3. But that's okay. Because you know what? My memories of that are still right up here. And we don't need Halo to return to that. Do we really? What we do need is creatives to come out there, fire up their computers, and start building their own version of Halo. Right, start building a new game. A game that focuses on that stoicism. A game that focuses on that protection of humanity. A game that focuses on, hey, get the boys in the same room. And you guys can have some fun. The day that they say, hey, you can connect four controllers to your computer, I'm putting a big screen TV in this room and me and the boys are gonna play some games. And it's gonna be freaking awesome. But overall, the name change isn't gonna help. And Unreal Engine is just gonna make Halo look like all the other Unreal games out there. Where once upon a time, Halo looked like Halo. So for everyone out there, thank you so much for checking out this video. I do appreciate all of it. If you would like to hear my thoughts on some other things, there's some videos that are popping up right now. I do absolutely appreciate it. We've gotten over almost, we've gotten over 180 subscribers this month. And so, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. And as always, until next time. Oh, I can't grab it. I can't like, there we go. Cheers, everybody.